Hello, in this video we're going to learn about the LM555 monostable multivibrator, the circuit you see in this schematic. We are going to discuss its operation, then we're going to use it with a zero crossing detector and a triac circuit to control AC power. This will give you an idea how these work and how to how an industrial control system might work for whatever reason. Nonetheless, let's begin. This is our basic monostable multivibrator circuit using the LM555. It is an 8-pin DIP integrated circuit. Pin 3 is my output. It is connected to diode LED D2 and a 470 ohm resistor. Reset pin 4 and pin 8 go to VCC. Pin 2, the trigger input, is pulled high by a 10K resistor that goes to VCC. And from there we have a push button switch that goes to ground. Pin 5 has a bypass capacitor. Pin 1 is ground. Pin 7 and 6, that's tr uh, trigger and discharge, are connected to a resistor capacitive circuit. The resistive circuit is a 100K potentiometer and a fixed 1K resistor. And C1 is just an electrolytic capacitor. It doesn't necessarily need to be an electrolytic. What is going to go on here? When we have a negative going pulse input on trigger, this um, discharges capacitor C1. And the output, pin 3, will go high, turning on our LED. When capacitor C1 charges up through R1 and R2, at a particular point, pin 3 will go back off to zero. The duration of pin 3's on time is, is, is calculated by the formula C1 times R1 plus R2 times 1.1. For instance, if I adjusted R1 to its maximum 1K and we had a total of 101,000 ohms and C1 was 1,000 microfarads, D2's on time would be something like 111 seconds. That's all there is to it. You push the switch, pin 3 goes high, D2 comes on, and the turnoff time is based on the values of R1 and R2, C1 times 1.1. This slide shows us our relationship between the trigger end and the output. When I press the switch, as you saw before, the input to trigger, as you see here, goes low. Out T on immediately, that's what connected to the LED at pin 3, immediately goes high, and it stays on based on the formula R1 plus R2 times C1 times 1.1. All right, one little nice thing to note. If I was to press the switch and hold it in, the output will stay high ever how long I hold it in. If I hold in the switch longer than the T on time, which is based on the capacitor resistor settings, it will still stay high until I release it. But if it's already timed out and I release it, it will immediately go low. All right, here's a, an upgraded version of my zero crossing detector that I've used with Arduino for several years. In the case of this device, I would have to use the output at A to give me the waveform we saw before here. That's the waveform that I would need. I need to go from a high to a low. The waveform out here goes at B goes to a low to a high. So we need to use test point 3 or output A. 
This is an oscilloscope representation of my zero crossing pulses versus the AC input waveform. We have a time between pulses of 8.33 milliseconds. We're using it at the half wave level. The input we're going to be using, where it goes um, high to low, is going to be doing this. As observed here, this is the relationship to the one we're not using. Again, what the circuit did was took this raggy zero crossing pulse from the optocoupler and cleaned it up and inverted it here and then inverted it again to give me this. Another alternative optocoupler circuit, for this you would have to use point A with this H11L1 op, uh, type optocoupler. Both of these were discussed in separate previous videos and are on the website. All right, here is my monostable multivibrator circuit once again using the LM555, but we've made some changes. We have no switch, and the trigger from the zero crossing pulses uh, come into pin 2. I have changed the value of R1 to 10K and C1 to 0.47 microfarads. This easily gives us a range with these component values of z to about from 0 to 10 milliseconds. That's plenty. Um, that's from 0 to above 8.33 milliseconds. That is what we need. All right, here is our TRIAC firing circuit. We've used variations of this before with Arduino, but this is a little different. I'm going to tie pin 1, the anode of the internal LED, to plus 5 volts, and pin 2, the cathode, is going to go to pin 3 of the LM555. What we want to do is when a trigger pulse turns on pin 3, we want to leave this off for a predetermined time. And when, it, and when uh, pin 3 goes low, then it will turn on the triac circuit. Again, the way this is, when the trigger pulse hits the 555 circuit, the output will go high. Because this is already tied to high, the triac circuit will stay turned off until pin 3 times out and goes low. Here we have the oscilloscope representation of the trigger pulse versus output on pin 3 of the LM555. Note that both, of course, are 120 hertz. Remember, we had a full wave bridge rectifier which doubled, which doubled the AC line frequency. Now, the duty cycle of channel A up here is only about 7.1%. Um, if I went and changed a capacitor, this came about from actually another a similar circuit, but let's just see what it, what it says, 7.1%. Down here in channel 2 is the on time for pin 3 of the 555, and it's 69.8%. By adjusting the 10K potentiometer, you should be able to go from 7.1% to 99% on the output. The longer the duty cycle on channel 2, which is the LM555 pin 3, the less bright the light bulb. If I turn on the light bulb, if I reduce this to about 7.1% because, because of the duty cycle here will not let me go below that, uh, the light bulb will be nice and bright turn to 40% in channel 2, it'll be less bright, and so forth. If you overshoot 100%, then you're going to be switching it on in the next half cycle, and you'll lose control of the circuit. Here's an oscilloscope representation of the AC power turn-on point on the load versus the AC waveform coming in.
I used a um, full wave pulsating DC instead of an AC, but it does the same thing. You notice that the power remain to the load, which is up here, remains off as long as pin 3 is high. The moment that pin 3 goes low, the optocoupler triac circuit turns on, and there is our power. By adjusting the potentiometer, we can move this power switch on point around within the circuit. Here's an oscilloscope representation of the zero crossing pulses versus the turn on time for the load. It gets a, um, you get your zero crossing pulse and the load voltage stays off until the 555 times out and pin 3 goes low and it turns it on. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com.